All in all, and by large, many Kenyans are now getting more conscious of their rights. This is uh, a new development in the Republic. Uh, we are dealing with the clientele that is not, uh, is not ignorant. Uh, this is already a sign that Kenya is moving so fast towards a new Kenya. That is the Kenya that is backed by the constitution, the rule of law, human rights, democracy, and uh, it makes also our area of human rights law um, more interesting and also more engaging because uh, as practitioners, maybe lawyers in the private practice and lawyers in the public pra practice, as well as lawyers in the academic practice must be equal to the task when it comes to the new demands uh, in the area of human rights. Uh, I shared this uh, in the recent video presentation and I wanted us to engage our discussion around death penalty and especially the mandatory death penalty in the Republic of Kenya. Murwate to case and Muratetu and the other was a case that materialized in the High Court in 2015. Um, it involved murder and uh, the convicted two uh, decided to go forward with appeal. So at the appeal, the appeal upheld the decision of the High Court and uh, the two did not end up there. They decided to push the same case from the first appeal to the second appeal at the level of the Supreme Court. And uh, the bench, the full bench, Chief Justice Emeritus David Maraga and the entire quorum came up with a judgment and a ruling that has defined the jurisprudence, especially in the Republic of Kenya today, concerning the mandatory death penalty. Well, the point of contention or the ground of the appeal has been based on or anchored on the, uh, the concept of the mandatory death penalty that uh, appears in the penal court under section 204, which rules as follows, that all persons convicted of murder shall be sentenced to death. As brief as it is, and uh, as controversial as it, may, as it may appear, it has been declared unconstitutional by the Muruatetu case as well as Mutiso versus the Republic case. And uh, declaring a practice unconstitutional may mean so much to all of us in the profession, but may also engage us in a lot of questions. Because first and foremost, we need to know why that part of the law has been in the penal court for such a long period of time. Second, we need to know why two presidents have since uh, suspended the practice of uh, death sentence by stopping executions, beginning with the former retired president, His Excellency uh, Mwai Kibaki. And also we have seen it with the current president, Uhuru Kenyatta. And in that case, we see uh, a systematic uh, trend towards an abolition of death penalty in the Republic. Uh, but the point of contention would be what to replace it with. Well, many countries uh, around the world, especially in the European region, have since replaced it with life imprisonment. 
and uh, sentencing an individual to life imprisonment shall also uh, mean so much to our judicial system and penitentiary system in the Republic of Kenya. Well, uh, be as it may, we need to interrogate the capacity and the competence of the Republic to manage and sustain, let's say, a number of criminals uh, that have been sentenced to life imprisonment in uh, our prisons in the Republic, the maximum prisons. For somebody to be convicted of murder, it means they premeditated the the, the whole event. Uh, event eh? And uh, I'm, to, I'm I'm speaking from a position of um, of uh, of having been a, a, a victim in terms of having a member of being been murdered uh, in a very very gruesome manner. So for me, the issue of uh, somebody who has committed murder uh, being left, uh, uh, let's say, to convicted uh, to life in prison instead of uh, instead of facing the hangman. Okay, for me, I believe that um, if you have committed murder and if it has, I mean, and, and if it is proved beyond uh, any any reasonable doubt that you actually committed that murder. And in the, uh, I mean, in the manner in which you commit, you should uh, be hanged. That's my view. Good. You know, I was just going through yesterday some of your, you know, the notes you have given us. But also I've gone through since 2000, the number of death sentences in Kenya. It is close to 2,000 people who were sentenced to, to death. Only in 2005, just before, five years before the current constitution, 744 people were sentenced to death, but none was carried out. No death penalty. The action was not taken. The sentence was passed, but the action was not taken. That tells you that generally in Kenya, and specifically in the judicial system, there's no mood for carrying out death penalty. The camp population are not generally, if you do the survey, are not really for death penalties. And uh, the judicial mood, you know, the courts, and you know, are not uh, for death penalty. You can see that a huge amount of death penalties were passed, but none, none was carried. So I think with the Muratete case, uh, you know, the country might, uh, uh, on its way out of, you know, death penalty sentences in the future. That's what I'm thinking. To interject on what she is saying, um, the judges uh, have pronounced themselves and, uh, I mean, and passed at, uh, the judgment, eh? the death penalty, but it is not for them to carry out that that uh, uh, I mean that sentence. You see, it is executive. I mean, who now uh, have to exec, um, uh, you know, to bring that action to be. So I believe that the judges pronounce themselves. Okay? okay, but now it is execution, which is I mean, which is not to be done by the judges or by the judiciary. That is now the problem, the executive, because uh, it uh, it requires uh, the presidential assent. I mean, if the executive have not done their part, then we cannot actually say that the judges do not have, uh, uh, I mean, are not in the mood to 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 to, let them to pronounce the death uh, sentence. I think by the numbers that he has mentioned, or that Bashir has mentioned, it means the judges have actually pronounced themselves on that particular matter. It simply means that uh, the the penal would probably have to be to be uh, amended, uh, okay, so that um, it either repeals completely the death penalty, or it uh, it completely abolishes the death penalty, mm -hmm. and then uh, okay puts in place what uh, other penalty 
udah replace replace the death penalty but but as it is now there's a constitutional crisis uh, thank you so much uh dr nyoyo as well as uh, my class members we appreciate uh, we need like to appreciate each other no matter what happens and uh, human rights is something that generally cuts across because we are humans and uh, in every day in our daily dealings we deal with people so the law is made for man and not man for the law so definitely for human rights is something that uh, will always meet it in one way or the other and uh, we are glad that you so enthusiastic in how you are carrying out your lectures and uh, it was more interactive because at the end of the day you will try to ensure that we participate in the discussion so we get to learn more thank you so much for your good work i also share in the sentiments of everybody uh, i think uh, even uh, the others who did not get the opportunity to attend this last class also have the same thoughts uh, i want to sincerely thank you for uh, the approach that you gave this course and uh, for widening our horizons uh, when i was uh, coming for this first lecture of human rights i did not know that it encompasses so many other things and uh, i love the way you categorically uh, distinguish between human rights and human rights law so uh, i love uh, the approach that you gave and also how you are contextually relevant uh, about the current happenings in the world uh, i think uh, this is uh, by far one of uh, the best classes that i have attended this semester and i hope uh, and um, i know that we are also going to do well in the exam thank so you so much and uh, bye for now